You're watching BaseNet Internet Television, a BaseNet Intermedia Group company. I'm here today with Michael Tobis, lecturer and author of 19 books, including winner of the American Library Association's Editor's Choice Award for 10 Hours Until Dawn, and the Independent Publisher's Best Nature Book of the Year Award, There's a Porcupine in My Outhouse. So Mike, how does someone who spent 15 years as a full-time insurance underwriter wind up as an award-winning author of 19 books one of which is about to become the basis of a Disney feature film. <laughs> well, Herb, it uh, wasn't easy. I was, um, in the early years, I was moonlighting. So I'd put in a full day of work and then always do a little bit of writing or research in the evening hours, weekends, right. when I could. And one of my little tricks was instead of bitching and moaning at the you know, cafeteria at the company I worked at about our jobs. I'd run to the Boston Public Library and do some of my research there. Really? And then really? Race, race back to the office before anybody knew I was gone. Did you actually eat lunch too? Or? Uh, I ate lunch when I got back to my desk uh, within a two minute <laughs> period. You know, many of us had reason this past winter to recall the, the blizzard of 78. Your first book talked about the survival techniques that many of us uh, shared those experiences right. back at that time. Since then, you've written five books chronicling survival at sea. Mm -hmm. um, what inspires you to follow that particular theme? Well, it all started with an audio tape. There was a tape made on board three boats in the blizzard of 78 that were all going down in this unbelievable storm. And someone on land tape recorded every radio message back and forth between the boats going down and the Coast Guard. And when I got my hands on that audio tape, my hair just stood up. Really? It was so dramatic and right. so suspenseful because not everybody makes it. Sure. And as I listened to this, it was 10 hours of audio tape. I thought to myself, what a book. And that project turned into... 10 Hours Until Dawn, the true story of the mm -hmm. pilot boat can do. Uh, are you a sailor yourself? Do you, are you a boatsman or do you have an uh, affinity for the sea? I'm not a sailor, but I'm always out on the ocean in a small boat fishing. Um, but would I make a trip to Bermuda or something, <laughs> you know, blue water uh, trip? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Your latest book. Uh, a Storm Too Soon, you were able to get access to some mm -hmm. incredible photographs uh, of the actual rescue. Right. How, how, where did you get those and how hard were they to get? Well, this was an event that occurred in the Gulf Stream in 2007. And, and when I say the Gulf Stream, I'm talking 200 miles off the Carolinas. Right. So when the boat sank and the survivors went through this incredible ordeal, in 70 and 80 foot waves, which is hard to believe and hard to imagine. Right. I asked the Coast Guard, I said, I can't picture a 70 foot wave with a little life raft in it. Right. And they said, well, we can help you. We took video of the rescue. And I spoke with wow. the pilot, his name was Nevada Smith. And he said he had an opportunity when the co-pilot was on the controls to take some video. And the, the image that stuck with me is the, the raft in an 80-foot wave, wow. and the raft looks like the size of a dime, wow. just in this enormous wave. And that sucked me into this story, and I was off and running. So all you had to do was ask. All I had to do was ask, but it was finding the right person to ask. There you go. That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> that, always the problem. That's hard. That's half the battle. Yep. Um, interesting that uh, you discovered in this particular story that the captains uh, whose decisions really mm -hmm. allowed for this survival story to, to take place right. uh, actually developed the skills as he was growing up in a rather difficult family situation that he was able to use in, in, in this. And um, along those lines, I'm wondering, do you keep in touch with the survivors, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, of this story? And if so, you know, how are they doing? Well, this person you mentioned, uh, 
Jean-Pierre de Lutz, uh, I'll call him JP, that's his nickname, he had a tough, tough childhood, an abusive father, and um, when his father harmed him physically, his biological mother had separated from the father a long time earlier, and mm -hmm. she had relocated to France. JP was here in the U.S., and at age 10 he had to go to France without knowing his biological mother, without speaking a word of French, wow. and being thrust into this whole new situation. Really? where he had to kind of survive on his own. He couldn't speak the language. He didn't know what was happening. Right. He had just come through this ordeal uh, from his father. So he became kind of a maverick, a, uh, an independent thinker, mm -hmm. a little bit of a loner, mm. all of which helped him when the boat sank in this storm. Right. And he had to keep making one decision after another to keep his crew alive. Wow. So. Uh, you know, when you interview people like this, they're opening up their hearts to you, and you can't help but uh, form a bond and an attachment. So in answer to the second part of your question, we did become friends, and we do stay in touch. And how, how is he doing? Uh, in the beginning, it was very rough for him, post-traumatic stress syndrome really? from the ordeal, because wow. you, you're out at sea, 200 miles from land, you think no one's coming. Right. And when you're in 70 and 84 waves, you realize you don't have long to live. Right. Uh, hypothermia, drowning, you name it. Right. Uh, so psychologically, it's almost like you get five years worth of adrenaline going sure. through you in a five hour period. Absolutely, absolutely. So it was rough, right. but he's doing much better now. Good. And Good. Um, he said doing the interviews for the book A Storm Too Soon helped him kind of uh, a catharsis, uh, uh, like therapy almost, talking really, about it really. and working his way isn't through. That, isn't that a win-win situation? Yeah. Uh, terrific, terrific. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a fantastic tale and a fantastic book, and uh, uh, I wanted to just chat a little bit about some of your other mm -hmm. books oh, that were reviewed by well-known newspapers, such as uh, Finest Hours, which you uh, co-authored uh, with Casey Sherman, uh, which is the one that is now been chosen to be the basis for a full-length feature film mm -hmm. from the Disney Studios. Uh, the Providence Journal uh, uh, reviewed your book and uh, I quote, they called it a blockbuster account of tragedy at sea. Gives a you are there feel. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us a short synopsis of what that one is, is covering? Well, in a nutshell, this was the Coast Guard's greatest rescue in their history. Two giant oil tankers in a storm off Cape Cod, split in half, as if you had the bow here and the stern here and cracked them over your knee. Mm -hmm. So they split in half on the same day in almost the same location. Wow. So the Coast Guard is just overwhelmed. You've got 84 lives at stake, wow. and this is back in 1952, so you don't have helicopters doing the rescues. Yeah. So it's small boats going into waves much larger than these right. small rescue boats. Wow. And the story is about uh, the rescue, although they don't save everyone, uh, miraculously most of the sailors do make it. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. I can see why yeah. Disney would be, uh, would be interested in that right. one for sure. Um, another of your um, books, Overboard, Boston Globe uh, is quoted as saying, Overboard is a heart-pounding account of the storm that tore apart a 45-foot sailboat. Mm -hmm. Michael Togus is a master of the weather-related disaster book. Um, can you give us a brief summary of that one? Overboard is, is really a, a story of uh, friendship put to the, the test. When the, when the boat gets trapped in the storm, there's five people on board, three newcomers learning about offshore sailing and then the captain and the first mate. Well, the storm sweeps both the captain and the first mate off the sinking vessel, wow. and they're carried away into the ocean. And the book really uh, starts to diverge there, where some chapters focus on the three newcomers on the sinking sailboat, and the other chapters follow the two men in the water. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really amazing. One of the men dies yeah. in the arms of the other wow. out there at sea. And the one who's still alive makes a vow to his dead friend, and he says, I'm, I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to bring you home. Wow. And he never releases the body through this 36-hour ordeal. Wow. Yeah, it's really powerful stuff. Incredible. 
incredible. Fatal forecast, uh, the LA Times. Togus skillfully submerges us in this storm and spins a marvelous and terrifying yarn. He makes us fight alongside Ernie Hazard and cheer as he is saved in a breathtaking book. Ernie Hazard, I guess, is the individual He's, that... Yes, Ernie is the main character, and of all the survivors I've interviewed, I think Ernie uh, is the toughest. Uh, so. He's alone, basically a 100-foot rogue wave pitch poles his boat. Uh, there's four crew members on it. He's the only one to get out. Mm -hmm. The problem is it's late November and he's in the North Atlantic. Water temperature is 55 degrees. And for the next three days, it's hard to wrap your head around this, he's thrown in and out of the life raft because the waves are so big. Right. And somehow he keeps getting back to it. He's trying different experiments to keep the raft afloat and safe. And how he didn't die from hypothermia or drowning right. is beyond me. Right. Uh, I've consulted with doctors, and he's so far off the charts, Yeah. Uh, they don't have an explanation. Almost a miracle. Yeah, well, it shows the power of the mind. He just right. kept talking to himself and saying, you're going to make it, do the right. next right thing. You know, aside from these, these books being entertaining, uh, what really impresses me about your uh, program that you run uh, is a seminar that you, mm -hmm. th that you run. You talk about it on your website. It's called Survival Lessons, Peak Performance Under Pressure. And uh, it sounds like it takes the skills that right. some of these people have exhibited and teaches people how to use them to improve their own professional and right. personal lives. Do you want to talk a little bit about that seminar? Well, and in the seminar, I talk about how all of us, whether it's in our jobs or our personal life, are going to face situations where we feel overwhelmed. Right. And I started to see common techniques from these survivors that I thought, these could help all of us get through the ordeal. And uh, there's, there's steps along the way. And if you follow them, you kind of get to the other side. Wow. So I distill using slides. I let the audience see what these survivors did. Right. And then I distill it down to 10 techniques to get us through difficult challenges. Wow. I think that's terrific, uh, of all of the things. That, that is what we really, uh, I think, makes a difference in people's lives. Yes, right. And uh, if people want to um, purchase some of your books, what, where's uh -huh. the best place for them to go? Or? Uh, they can find them on Amazon.com and all the major uh, bookstores. And I also have a website. It's MichaelTogus.com. And uh, Togus is a tough one to spell. It's T-O-U-G-I-A-S. So MichaelTogus.com. And you can see some of the video from A Storm Too Soon Great. on my website. Great. Well, I want to thank you very much, oh, Mike, thank you, for uh, being with us today. And thank we wish you. you luck with your books. And uh, can't wait to see the movie when it comes out uh, as well. <laughs> thank thanks. you for having me. Thanks very much.